Hello, I'm Thorax. And I'm Ember. Wait a minute, weren't you supposed to... Oh, wait. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 15, Triple Threat. I don't know why they kept saying your name in this episode. I don't know. I've never met these ponies. Or that dragon. Or that changeling. Well, you'll be happy to know that even though this was a spike episode, we did enjoy it. I only made Lux pause once, and it was so that I could comment and go, Nightmare Night. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his best episode, but it wasn't the worst either. It was definitely the best in this genre of spike episodes, where he's going around fumbling something up. My only real problem with it comes near the end, which I'll bring up later. But the expressions in this series are just getting so much better. And the animators are taking so much time to really put stuff in the expressions. And all the expressions Spike goes through in this episode just really hit well. I think the animators uh, they got some time to put in some new assets. Or we're seeing a trickle down of the new software that they got to use for the movie. Yeah. I didn't actually expect to see that until after the movie came out. Also, I need to count how many weeks it is until October 6th, so I can see if this season actually ends when the movie comes out. Uh, so any big points you want to start with? Uh, just briefly like to reiterate, check our history. I was Ember first. <laughs> yep, and they really upped the sundariness in this episode. Though I never really considered her a sundere, but I think the writers heard that. And they, like, up the ante in this episode? Just a little bit. And what we've seen of dragon culture, it's very competitive and very, I'm not going to admit I like you. I'm just going to trounce you in a competition. Yeah. And apparently she's allergic to confetti. Not emotions, but confetti. Well, we know that there's such a thing as scented confetti. So... Hmm. Could be a particular fragrance. Or she could be allergic to emotions because she sneezed a couple of times without the confetti around, but... Or she could actually have a cold. Or she just be allergic to the fragrances and stuff around a Ponyville. Because there aren't a lot of things in the Dragon Kingdom. You mainly see rocks and lava. Not that those things don't also have odors, but you don't have a lot of organic matter. Could also just be the fact that Ponyville has very clean air. <laughs> Could also be that the writers just enjoyed the fun that happens with a dragon sneezing fire in a place built mostly of wood. Well, appears to be built mostly of wood. But moving into things that kind of failed for me in this episode, other than what I'll talk about later, is the joke about Ember seeing all ponies alike kind of fell flat for me. Oh, well, Starlight and Twilight do have some similarities in design, but it could have been a little better played because one of them has wings, the other does not. Also, you've been corresponding with Twilight via mail, so you should have a better ability to pick her out in terms of personality because you've had all that written communication. It's like I said, that's the one joke that really fell flat for me. It didn't really get a chuckle out of me at all. It was just like, oh, I see what they're going for. Well, to me, I kind of viewed it more as a carryover from the fandom explosion episode. What's another thing that people in the fandom say? The design of these two characters is too similar. Okay, let's make a joke about it. We couldn't fit this in last time because Starlight wasn't part of the journal, so we had to wait an episode. Hmm, I see the point. I like how Spike attempted to solve friendship problems and how he solved a couple of them, but none of them caused his spikes to glow. That's because you don't go looking for the friendship problem. You go to the general area, but then it finds you. Also, the map is kind of reaching far out there. I mean, it used to just be the main six, then Starlight, and we theorized that maybe it was pulling on Starlight because she had interacted magically with the map. What call does the map have on Spike services? He went through the portal with Twilight. Also, he's probably magically connected to Twilight. I mean, she is the one who magically hatched him. Yeah, but not only someone who's not of the main six, but someone who's not even a pony. Also, it's kind of funny how it was his spines that lit up. Mm-hmm. I thought that I was calling him. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought, too. It was like, huh, 
<laughs> yeah, he he's been gone from the dining area too long, and I'm here all alone with Twilight. Or or is it Starlight? And they all look alike to me. So we pulled that joke off much better. And then I guess the triple threat was Spike had Ember and then had a friendship problem to solve that was of his causing. So basically the map alerted him to the fact that he messed up and needed to fix something. So yeah, it's kind of awkward to be sent to fix a friendship problem that you basically caused mm -hmm. by not being there for your friends because you're trying to keep them apart. Yeah. And I still want to know, why did Twilight and Starlight go along with this? They're both leaders of their peoples, which means that they are technically equal in rank. A huge diplomatic thing could have been done with this. And all handled very well. Okay, if they don't get along perfectly, you could at least be there with both of them at the same time and be keeping a watchful eye and trying to prevent miscommunications instead of shortchanging both your friends and running around and spending time with them separately because they shouldn't know about each other. Okay. Really? We just very recently had an episode about how people who have a great deal of differences between them can still be good friends because what they enjoy about each other is those differences. So why automatically assume that Thorax and Ember couldn't possibly get along? And that they couldn't learn anything from each other. Yeah, that they couldn't at least respect the office that each of them holds because they're both leaders. And since you bring that up, I can now bring up my real big problem with this episode. Timing and pacing. Specifically the pacing of when the resolution came for Thorax and Ember. How they got angry at Spike and flew off and ended up meeting up with each other and solving each other's problems. That happened a little too quickly for my taste. I'd rather the fight and everything would have happened near the middle of the episode. And then we had the rest of the episode for those two to get to know each other and then solve each other's problems. And then come back sorry for Spike. That would have also made Spike's moping a little bit stronger. The meaning behind it. Because he would have done it longer. Mm -hmm. And we could have been spared some of the awkward back and forth because the implication was that it had been going on for most of the day. So we could have still implied that without showing so much of it. And general nitpick in terms of getting things ready for Dragon Lord Ember, why were there not gems to be served as food at the luncheon? You know that you really like gems, so why wouldn't you have gone out and gotten gems to put on the table. Yes, ponies use them as currency, but really, she's eating the dishware and she's eating the castle. Yeah, that's another thing I was thinking of bringing up. It's like, huh, I remember that being a joke in the fandom that Spike would eat the castle. He never has, but Amber has. Well, I didn't say not to. <laughs> and it's just right there. This is the thing you ponies do, right? Poor Derpy and her muffin. I know, like that was so painful. Pretty much all her interactions with ponies that were regular citizens of Ponyville were painful. When she first showed up and then the trumpets startled her and then her fire displays and ponies running because yeah, usually things catching fire is bad. The town was prepping for the coming of Dragonlord Ember. So didn't they have some context that Yes, another dragon is coming to visit. I mean, nobody freaks out about Spike. Except in the episode where he grows into a giant dragon and kidnaps Rarity a la King Kong style. Mm -hmm. And speaking of background ponies like Derpy, we're also getting a lot more interactions with background ponies overall. Like Lyra and Bon Bon were in this episode. And they actually had speaking roles again. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. We're seeing a lot more of that throughout the episodes now. It's nice that there's actually interaction because in the earlier episodes, it almost felt more like the background ponies were part of the scenery. You know, that they were just a backdrop against which the main characters played. But now we're getting a lot more interactions with, like, background characters overall, making the world feel more, hmm, real. Uh, so have we gone over some of your nitpicks already? And do you probably have more? Of course I have more, and just when Thorax first showed up, I know he's very gentle, but 
but it seemed like they were really overplaying it in the beginning to contrast Thorax and Ember and why they couldn't possibly get along. I also like the bug joke. I completely forgot about the bug joke. Ooh, fire pretty. Mm-hmm. Also, shiny things! <laughs> and you did all this for me? Is that a statue of a dragon? Yeah, right there you go. Well, actually, we also invited another leader here today. We thought that the three of us could all work together. Problem solved before it ever starts. And then you could have had different problems of the two of them both feeling like Spike was shortchanging them or favoring one over the other. Hmm. And have actual friendship problems of trying to learn to make new friends and understand people who are so different from you. Which I think would have been much more interesting. But this episode wasn't too bad. Like I said, it wasn't like, why did we have to follow Spike this episode? Ugh. <laughs> They're getting better at writing Spike-only episodes. Yes, I still want to repeat. Why did Twilight and Starlight go along with this? So we could have a plot. Oh, I forgot. Brain cells can be killed off for plot purposes. Yep. I would like to know how Twilight is going to repair the castle. Also, if anyone's ever going to tell Dragon Lord Ember that that is not a pony thing. Ponies don't eat rocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't stick food on walls because, well, our food kind of goes bad if it's stuck to a wall. Yeah, but she thought it was a really cool friendship thing. Like, oh, I didn't know it was a friendship thing that you... Decorate your walls in your friend's favorite food. Ah, <laughs> uh, misinterpretations. Yeah, so we could have had some very interesting dialogue about actual cultural differences between dragons and ponies instead of just the, oh, hugging this again. <laughs> yeah, personal boundaries. Not everybody wants a hug. And I also kind of thought, like, is... Thorax becoming kind of like Pinkie Pie? Because his arms stretched far to pull those two into a hug. Uh, remember that he is a changeling. Oh, yeah, but it's usually like magic that transforms him. Like the big fire thing where you transform into a bear, which is kind of cool. That whole scene was resolved rather nicely. I'm not going to let you hurt Spike. I'm not going to let you hurt Spike. Wait a minute. But that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So what are we doing? Getting mad at Spike. Okay, yeah, I, I can get on board with that. And then later, I'm sharing my feelings with you. I'm angry. <laughs> Being more specific, I'm mad. I'm very upset. I can now tell him why. <laughs> <laughs> I am being authoritative. Yeah, those parts were fun. Yes. Hmm. Think we're done? I think we're pretty much done, because... I don't really need to get into how Dragon Lord Ember is totally copying me. <laughs> uh, so, final thoughts? Well, it was a reasonable episode. It had some nice lessons in it. The pacing was a bit rushed, and Twilight and Starlight were apparently dumbed down for plot convenience, so. Apparently. Though, Starlight, I could believe, because she's still not completely... Switched over to the way the main six thinks. She still has other priorities in her head first before she moves on to what the other main six would consider to be normal. But at the same time, she made friends with Mod Pie and Trixie. Hmm. Also, in the beginning of the episode, Twilight kept saying how Spike was fine, how he had it, how everything was great. And then she backpedaled. So we have another episode of Twilight expressing confidence in somebody that she's close to and then backpedaling because she did the same thing in a much more heavy-handed manner when the map summoned Starlight to Celestia and Luna's castle. Which reminds me, I really like the part where Starlight went, I like Ember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strong, authoritative, bossy. Yeah, I could see how those two would get along as long as they're not having to fight for dominance with each other because then things could get a little rough. Mm-hmm. It's also funny because we had that little fantasy montage of Twilight's of what would happen if she sent Starlight to go be ambassador to the Dragon Kingdom. Yeah! <laughs> hey, you have no idea what their dynamic would be. So, 
I like this episode. It was okay. It wasn't the best Spike episode ever, but it wasn't the kind that you go, ooh, ooh, I'm watching a Spike episode. There was lots of fun in it. There were a lot of good jokes. There were definitely some head scratchers of like, huh? And I'm definitely looking forward to the next episode, especially with the way the season's going. Each episode seems to be really good. There haven't really been any like ones where we're like, why, writers, why? So overall, I liked it. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 15, Triple Threat. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, comment, check out other videos. If you like Lux's art, you can see more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and if you can find the Mastodon server he's on, he's over there too. If you really like Lux's art and would like some of your own, check out the link below for commission availability and pricing. Like us, but don't want a piece of art right now? If you are willing and able, we do have Patreon and Ko-fi for your financial consideration. Patreon starts at a dollar, Ko-fi at three. Thanks again for listening.